Good, good. Are you guys tired? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really no. tired. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys know, but I study at university and we have our final exam. So um, it's just been like busy studying for that. I'm not sure it's so boring, but you have to get through it. Okay, so hopefully, um, yep, the line of the stream is working. We'll see if there's any more kids to go through. And uh, one parent is asking for the so I just started. So today, um, uh, because um, we have to go through writing and maths, I'll start with writing. So the first thing I want to uh, talk to you guys about is a lot of you haven't sent me your writing. And the people who send me a writing, I only got it either yesterday or um, the day before. So remember, guys, your homework is due on the week that it's due. So for example, my dad, my dad sent it on Friday. Oh, sorry. Yes, your dad did send it earlier. But for the most of you, um, I got it very late. So Aya and the other people who sent it late, you'll get your writing feedback. So essentially, yeah. send the mark mark on a piece of paper and I'll send to you like a send a photo version or a scanned version of that. Uh, reply back to email but make what sure do we have to write sorry what do we have to write because i wasn't here the first and second half oh, okay that's okay so every two weeks you know we have a writing um, piece of homework so that there was a writing due last week so you guys would do your writing on week one send it to me in week two and it'll give me a week to mark it and send your feedback so today we'll go through a bit of overall feedback on writing. And then in addition to that, we'll have a lesson today as well on writing. Okay. Sounds good? All right. One second. I just want to see. You guys are on speaker at the moment, but let's see if you guys can hear me if I wear headphones. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can. You can. Yes, we can hear you. Can you say yes, something, Aya? No, I didn't say anything. Okay, okay. So you can hear me clearly, right? Yep. Oh, perfect. Awesome. All right. So this makes life so much easier because it was on it was on live speaker just a bit earlier. Cool. So today the first thing I want to talk about is with writing. I want to go through really quickly what we're looking for in writing and how we mark it and give a bit of general feedback. And then we'll go through today's lesson on writing, which is how to make better problems. Okay. So let me open up. Um. Okay, so can you guys see this? Yes. Perfect. So for all our new students and our old students as well, this is what we used to mark your writing. So it's broken up into three sections. There's section one, which is creativity, which is at a 30 marks. Section two is structure at a 14 marks. And section three is English convention, six marks. So in total, there's 50 marks you can get. Now, the average score most of our students get is around, I'd say between 22 to 30 out of 50. Yeah. If you're getting about 30, you're doing really well. Um, about 40 is usually your exceptional students. So every 100 pieces of writing we mark, maybe five or 10 kids will get about 40. But most students will get between 25 and 30. And then there'll be a few students will be getting below 25 as well. All right. So I'll quickly go through it. Make sure you guys all understand the marking section. So the creativity itself is broken into three sections. And this is based on the three rules of creativity that we guys teach. You guys remember those three rules that we went through a lot a few weeks ago? Yeah, you don't? I'm, yeah, I do. I, I okay. remember. Awesome. So it's... Basically so, rule number, uh, so the first rule, remember, 
Um, also, could you just make sure you guys are on mute unless I ask you to be unmuted, but um, okay. So rule number one is topic implementation. So remember we said, don't write about the literal image, right? So this breaks down into few marks. So if I were to show you, it'll be like this. So from, if you don't mention the topic at all, if you don't write about the topic, you get zero marks. If you write about the topic, you get between um, zero, well, actually one, you get between one, oh, oops, why am I, I messed it up, sorry. You get zero marks. And then if you write about the topic, you'll get between one to three marks. And then if you uh, write about the actual topic, just the topic itself, you'll get between three to six marks. And then if you use a to topic as a metaphor, you'll get between six to eight marks. And then if it's used as a metaphor throughout the text, you'll get between eight to 10 marks. So it really depends on how you're using, you know, the topic and how well you do it. So for example, you might write about the topic, right? And it might not be a metaphor, but you could still get six out of six marks. You might use it as a metaphor, sorry, six out of 10 marks. You might use it as a metaphor once, and it might be a very weak metaphor, so you might get six. If it's a very strong metaphor, if it's just used once, you might get eight. And if it's used as a metaphor throughout the text, you get in the top range of marks. Same thing goes with the morals and messages. And this is basically a big section that we'll go through today, right? So with the morals and messages, once again, if you have zero more, like zero messages or morals, you normally get like zero to two marks, and then it goes, and then it kind of goes all the way to the top like that at varying degrees until it's 10. So the various levels you can do is a moral is touched on. It is a very simple moral and it's a very mature message, right? So you could have a story where there's no moral or message like Jack and Will, Jill went to the park, Jill lost her soccer ball. They looked for the soccer ball. They found it the next day and they were happily ever after. There's no real moral or message. A value of moral that's touched on would be Jack and Jill went to the park. They lost their soccer ball. They worked very, very hard. They looked everywhere they couldn't find it, but they didn't want to give up. So they worked hard and they found it. So this is a, you know, you're, you're touching on a moral, a moral about or a message about working hard. A simple moral would be something like Jack and Jill lost the ball. They went to the park. Jill was very sad. So Jack gave Jill um, his soccer ball. And then they played soccer, but the next day she found it. It's a very simple moral, you know, sharing is caring, that sort of thing. A very mature message would be Jack and Jill grew up um, grew up in uh, the same school. Uh, Jack, Sir Jill came from a very rich family and Jill had all the toys in the world. Um, and she never let Jack um, play with the toys. One day, um, due to recession, her dad lost her job. They lost all their property, all their toys and everything. And Jill was very sad. But Jack um, let, you know, Jill um, come to his house and play with the soccer ball. And while playing, um, Jill accidentally kicked the ball and they lost it. Jack was, Jack was very, very sad, but he forgave Jill and said, it's okay. You know, it's fine. It's just a soccer ball. We'll figure something out. A uh, few months later, Jack, Jill's dad got a new job at a bigger kind, better firm. He got all the money and he bought Jill all the toys she once lost. And then they shared the toys together and they were best friends again. So do you see how that's a much more like in-depth like um, message where you see Jill transforming as a person from someone who's very selfish to someone who's more caring? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, so that that's that's what we mean by more mature, yeah. right? So there's a level, there's levels to it. Then you have realism. Um, this should really be changed. The word should be changed. So in the past, uh, last year, Loyola was always we always just said we care. Your story must be realistic. This year onwards, we've changed the definition from realism to feasibility. So your story is very unrealistic. So your story is very unfeasible. Jack and Jill were playing soccer and J Jack kicked the ball away. Jill then took her dad's credit card and bought a signed soccer ball from Lionel Messi to give to Jack. Doesn't seem very feasible, does it? 
some are realistic. Jack and Jill lost the ball. Jill was really sad. She saved up her money and, um, sorry, she, she, she was very sad. Um, there was a school raffle and if she scored, you know, three goals in a row, she would win the prize. She get, she won it and she gave it to Jack. Yeah, it's realistic. It's realistic. There's nothing really wrong with it, but, um, I don't know. So far, you haven't really told us whether Jill is like, you know, a really good soccer player or not. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. You'd still get, you know, the average score, like about five, right? Your story is very feasible, very realistic. So that would be, you know, Jack and Jack, Jill kicked the ball away. She was very sad. She saved up her pocket money for a whole year. And at the end of the year, she uh, bought, bought a brand new soccer ball for Jack. That's pretty realistic. It could, it's very likely to happen. There's a long, you know, waiting period. She had to work to get it. So that's how you guys get marked. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to with the marking key is one, 30 out of 50 marks. So 60% of your marks will be on creativity. The reason being is in gate, in the um, parent presentation slide, as I've shown last week and the week or the week before, most what you're really marked on is how creative your writing is. Right. So to kind of reflect that, we weighted the writing in such a way that you'll get most of your marks based off how creative you are. Right. And then we split it up into the, these three sections. So when you do get, so for example, the two or three people who send me their writing, when you get your writing feedback back, look at your scores. So for example, if you got a score like this, so let's say you got a score like seven, oh, actually, five, five, seven, something like this, the areas you should focus on will be these two, right? And within these two, this is usually the hardest section to improve on because it, you have to think outside the box. But with morals and messages, it shouldn't be that hard to improve on, but we can still focus on it today. And the other tip is, to go from writing the topic to this section, it's very easy to make that jump. So also think about if you get a mark like up in this section, like a four or a five or a six, to go to this section, it's not that hard. And by simply using it as a metaphor, you can make that big jump. So be kind of smart about it. And then, you know, really look at where you got your marks, where you lost your marks, et cetera. Okay, um, I saw that someone had their hand up. Um, let's see, who was it? Was it Ryan? Oh, sorry, Rajnesh, you had your hand up? Did I answer your question? Yeah, it answered my... Um... Perfect. So next is structure. Now structure, although it's not specifically, you know, marked for in gate, it's still very important for your writing. And the main reason is, Again, imagine if I came to one of your restaurants, right? Let's just say Yashleen runs a restaurant and she makes cake. I order a cake from her and she gives me icing on one side on a, on a separate container. She gives me three layers of plain sponge cake on one end. And then she gives me candles. It's not structured, it's not put together. Similarly, your story, it must follow a structure from a beginning to a middle to an end, right? So that's where we you get some marks. And then also with your paragraphs and your sentence of variation. So paragraphs is pretty straightforward. With every new idea or a, a new concept or a new section being introduced, use a paragraph. And then with sentence of variation, what we mean by this is some students have a tendence, tendency to have a rambling on or a long sentence. So it'll be like, Jack and Jill went to the, went to, sorry, Jack and Jill went to the park, they lost their soccer ball and then they went to the swimming pool and then they were asked the lifeguard and then this and then that and then that. You see, it's a long rambling sentence. Well, other students have very short sporadic sentences, so short, short uh, sentences. So it'll be like, Jack and Jill went to the park. Jack hit the soccer ball. The ball went to the fence. Jack went to the shops. Jack took her money out. Jack paid the, for the ball. So we, you want variation. So again, don't worry too much about these two, these section, individual sections because it's only like two marks each. So each section you get, it'll be out of two like that. 
and it adds up to 14. All right, next final section uh, is, is English conventions. And this is where you get the least amount of marks. So six or 12%. This is still important, but it's not as important. So you will get marks on it, but it won't be the thing we want you to focus most of your attention on. So there's punctuation, grammar, spelling, and vocabulary. Does anyone have any questions about the marking key so far? Yeah, Aya? Um, why, is it, why does it say there's five marks for the punctuation section if um, there's only four? Oh, that's just a typo. That should be six. So we normally break it down like, I think so the vocabulary was two, spelling, I think was two and it was like a one each something like that anyone else have any questions and any other questions no uh yes uh sagarwal doesn't like the doesn't the 30 and the 14 and the oh yeah never mind i I just did math wrong. <laughs> That's okay. Are you a new student, by the way? Yep. Uh, do you live in Mandra? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think you live very close to my cousin on the same street. All right. Yeah. Um, you, you're in, like, yep, yeah, uh, next to the shopping center, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. My cousin lives on that same street. Okay. okay. So uh, let's uh, get started on today's lesson. So today I want to talk about um, superheroes, actually. So let me. Superheroes. Open. Yes, superheroes. For a gay class. That's right. Okay. Who was that? Who asked the question? That was me. Who's me? I was. I'm wondering. Arnav. Sorry, who? Arnav. Arnav. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. Oh, hey, Sina. Um. All right. So let's get started on superheroes. So, do you guys know who Superman is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What, what yes. do you guys know about Superman? Um, he, he is flies. extremely powerful. He can fly. He has, he has, he has laser, laser beams. beams. One at a time. So could you guys put your hand up? Yep. Uh, S. Agarwal, what's your actual name? Sparsh. Sparsh. Okay. Sparsh. Tell me. He can fly. He's yeah. very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, he has laser beams. Mm -hmm. He's very fast. Yeah. And he actually inspired a lot of the heroes. Yeah. Yep, cool. Um, yep. What about you, Yesley? What, what else can you tell me about Superman? He's in a lot of movies. Yep. What else? Anyone else? Uh, Hannah. Um, he... Is um he's um he's in a movie called The Man of Steel. He That's can right. fly. He's super yep. strong. Yeah. And uh, his weakness is um a type of rock. I forgot what it's called. Kryptonite. Right. Yeah, kryptonite. Whatever. Yeah. Good. Kryptonite. So you you you've touched on a very interesting concept. So so far. I'm more to Marvel though. Sorry. I'm more to Marvel than DC. Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So you touched on a very good point, and I'll ask Ved and Arnav, and I'll end there. So Ved and Arnav, actually, Ved, tell me, what do you know about Superman? Um, that he can breathe in space. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he can fly, he has super speed and laser eyes. Yep, and Arnav. His name is Superman. Yeah. So basically, if you think about Superman, right, he, he, he okay, so I'll give you a bit of backstory with Superman. Superman is an actually an alien. He's from the planet of Krypton. And when the planet of Krypton was about to be destructed, um, his parents, um, I forgot the name of the parents, but they sent him to Earth, right? And the difference is in Krypton, they had a very harsh, very harsh sun. The gravity was, I think, so much stronger than the, than the Earth. And um, overall, because you know he came from a very harsh environment, his people or the uh, Kryptonian people, people from Krypton, they are, have basically superpowers on Earth, right? 
Now, the crazy thing about Superman is now talking about his powers, he can fly, as you guys mentioned. He can shoot lasers out of his eyes. He is indestructible. If you shoot a nuclear bomb at him, if you shoot guns at him, anything at him, he's indestructible. He can run as fast as close to fast of light, right? So if you think about other superheroes, right? For example, if he and Batman were to fight, who would who would pretty much win? I actually Batman. don't know. Superman. Superman. Yeah. Batman. Because Most Batman is actually very small. Yeah, Batman has to use his brains to destroy him, but Superman is significantly more powerful than him, right? He can like for example, if Superman was just you know, just basically as smart and just use his powers, he could shoot laser eyes out of his eyes and cut Batman in half. Or because he's so strong, he could literally run to Batman as fast as light and Batman will be too slow to react, grab him and break him in half. But Batman has lots of gadgets and Wait, one um, second. he's the also sneaky. Is... Yeah, but which one of the, his the gadgets thing is... but which one of his uh, gadgets could stop Superman? So pretty much Batman's defeated um Superman before in some of the like uh series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like but then what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is do you see how infinitely more strong Superman is? Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about him and Flash. Superman fans. and Saitama are like the same. Yeah. So if Saitama is stronger. If if Superman and um the Flash were to fight, Superman can run faster than the Flash. He can run almost as fast as the Flash. He can? Yeah. So I I'm mean pretty sure Flash is much faster. If if he wants to fight the Hulk, now again, I understand that they're from different universes, but if he wants to fight the Hulk, he could pick him up and take him into the sun. Superman can literally fly into the sun and get stronger from the sun. Does Superman seem like a very relatable character? Yes. He does? Because, no. like, no. They, um, well, kind of. He doesn't really relate to you, any of the you, other characters. How can you, how can you relate yeah. to him, Hannah? Because, um, well, not the, uh, not like, like in <laughs> Marvel and Hulk, they both get pretty, like, really, really mad. No, no, no. How can you, can you relate to him? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So most people can relate to Superman because he's he, he has no weaknesses. The only weakness he has is this rock called kryptonite. That's it. But overall, he's pretty much indestructible. On the other hand, let's talk about Batman. Who's Batman? Batman, Batman is like basically is... a bat, but like a human. A bad <laughs> no, bat. no, Batman is... A person who, who had a really rich family. Mm-hmm. And then one night when they went to watch a movie, they took a short cut through an alleyway and his parents were shot. And then yep. he was uh, taken care by his butler. Yeah. And then and then his got he got his name because once he got into a cave and he saw a bat and mm-hmm. he saw that how like symbolic bats are. Mm-hmm. And he's not very powerful. Like he's like more than average of a human strength, but he has more gadgets and like mm. IQ than most heroes. Mm. Now, if you think about Batman, as you mentioned, does he have any superpowers? No. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Joker. No, that's his enemy. He has no superpowers, no. right? He can't fly. He can't shoot laser beams. I he can he's... be killed by, by bullets. He's very, very, you know, weak. But... Is he the second most powerful superhero next to Superman? No. Yeah. 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 So if you think he about... He can almost defeat him. Yeah, if you think about the two yeah, main superheroes from DC, you think about Superman and Batman. And the reason is Batman is smart. He uses his... Even though he's a human, he uses his human brains to defeat things, right? So that, that's what makes Batman so incredible. Can what most of us... That game? Huh? Would Batman be good at get because he's smart? <laughs> no, 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 not necessarily. He's more of a battle like you. He's he's a detective slash like like he's uh, very sneaky. Yeah, he's a detective slash a sh- like type of assassin, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's why. Um, so the reason I wanted to say Batman's more relatable is because most of you guys are humans. Batman, the only superpower he has, I mean, he has money, 
but he uses brains to you know fight things and overcome obstacles right now what i wanted to really contrast is these two characters who are very very different and i want to talk about the two so today's lesson is all about how to create a good problem a good problem in your stories and i want to tell you why problems are important imagine you have these two characters character 1 superman who is indestructible nothing can really stop him he pretty much finds everything easy and the only thing that can stop him is a small rock on the other hand you have a human being who is fighting heroes and people who have superpowers and so much more powerful than him and all he has is his brain which story seems more interesting to you superman batman it's more realistic Batman. Batman. Superman. Come on, chat it out. Batman. 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 Probably Batman. Okay. Superman. Now, the reason I agree with Batman. Now, I'm not saying either one of you are wrong because either one of you could find one story more interesting is because Batman you have to like, you know, you want to you know that he's fighting someone who's much stronger than him, but you don't know how he's going to defeat him, right? So if you think about um different characters, like if you've seen the marvel series you know about um the you know you know about thanos right and you know about the heroes he's fighting thanos yeah. is so much stronger than all the other heroes and it's only if they combine as a team that they can beat him so you're wondering to the whole series the evil guy is so much stronger how can the good good characters how can they ever defeat him and that's the same thing in real life as well for example most of you guys can you name a time when you have to have a when you had a big challenge not when you have a super villain who you're trying to fight but name a challenge you had to fight um i don't know uh naplan probably cuz when you say challenge you don't mean like actual fight yeah No, I'm not saying you have to fight anything, but I asked you when you've had a challenge for a big yeah, challenge. So, so someone said Naplan. Yeah, what um, else? Tests of the Naplan. Yep. Does any anyone here play sports? Yes. I play yeah. football, basketball. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, so all of those things you mentioned are correct. So for example, Naplan you've had to do this big exam that was super challenging and you know you didn't know if you could you you didn't know if you could if you could win or not right um you had to uh play against a team for example recently excuse me recently i've um i picked up rowing right so so it it kind of looks like this let me show you So recently I picked up rowing where you get on a boat and then you row, right? So what was what was hard about it is in our first competition we were going against a team who won last year. They were last year's champions, right? And my team was nowhere like you know we didn't beat them. So we were second best. So in the first race everyone was nervous because my team had been training all throughout this year to for this competition. But the other team they were already the champions so we wanted to beat them so the first race was very very intense at the end of the first competition we beat the team by a whole boat so it wasn't a close competition we were way ahead of them so in the second race against them do you think the second race would have been as interesting as the first no no, no. why not because we already knew who won Exactly. On the on an, another example, let's just say if me and if uh I were to go into a boxing match, like J, you know like Logan Paul and all those people have boxing matches now. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Imagine if I get in a boxing match with one of you guys. Would it be interesting to watch? No. Yeah, because I, I'm going to destroy you guys, right? Unless Ian trains for a whole year, he becomes ripped and you know muscular, and he trains under the best boxers, and he comes to fight me. You might find it interesting, but most of the time, you know, it's going to be an unfair fight, so it's not as interesting. Bro, so, uh, so stories are interesting, 
because you don't know what the outcome is. You don't know what's going to happen because the character has to fight something that's much more difficult than the powers they technically have. And if you think about it in the long term, real life is kind of like that, right? Where the problems in life is usually bigger than each one of us, right? What we become in real life, you know, what job we get, whether, you know, we are able to succeed in life, all those sort of things, we don't know what's going to happen. And we have to grow and become better individuals to succeed in life. Do you guys understand? Yeah. So now that you know that, I want to tell you guys two stories and I want you to tell me which one's more interesting. Ready? So this story is about a famous basketball player. He is a basketball player I really like because of his personality and things he does. And he also has the same birthday as me. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? Kobe Any guesses? Bryant. Any no. guesses? I don't even know your birthday. <laughs> It's Kobe Bryant. Michael Jordan. Oh, I knew it. I guessed. Good guess. Good guess. So Kobe Bryant was an exceptional basketball player. He's, 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 you know, people think of him as one of the best basketball players of all time. Now, Kobe Bryant wasn't exceptionally tall. He wasn't the tallest player. He wasn't the fastest player. He wasn't the player who could, you know, take the best, you know, um, shots. He wasn't the strongest player but he's considered one of the greatest players of all time. So I want to tell you two stories about Kobe, okay? Story number one. These are based on his real life stories, by the way. Story number one is, excuse me, Kobe Bryant was born to a professional basketball player, his dad. So when he was young, he went to, he grew up in Italy. He went to basketball summer camps. He joined his high school team. He destroyed everyone. He went to the NBA. He destroyed everyone. And he won five championship rings. Okay? That's story number one. All right? Story number two is Kobe Bryant was born to a professional basketball player, his dad. But his dad wasn't a very good professional basketball player to play in America. So he had to move to Italy as a kid. As a kid, he was bullied because he was different and he couldn't speak Italian and didn't play football because Italians love football much more than basketball. His dad was fired from the team and didn't have many mu much money. So they moved back to the US or America. He went to basketball summer camps. He played all summer when he was young, right? At a basketball summer camp, he played for an entire summer and he didn't score a single point and he's ranked the worst player in his camp. He wanted to quit basketball. He then joined his high school team, and he wasn't very good. So he woke up at 5 a.m. He woke up at 5 a.m. and would practice for three hours before class. He joined the NBA, and in his first finals, he missed the shot and made his team lose the finals. Everyone hated for him, and he hated him for it, and he was bullied. He spent the next few months training from 4 a.m. in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. In one of the matches, he tore a ligament, which is known to be one of the most painful experiences a person can have, right? It's very, very painful. But he still walked without crying, without you know, making any scene. And he walked up with a torn ligament and scored three points. And then he didn't even get people to carry him to the hospital he walked to the hospital as nothing happened. He won five championship rings. Which story was better? Second. Second one. Second. 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 Second by a mile. Why was the second one better? Because it was, because it had more information. I'm like, you explained it more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was more, it's more like emotional and like, 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 yeah. Here, I want you to look at the two stories. I know the second one has more information, but I want you to see what's different about the second one. For example, the first one I said he was born to a professional basketball player, professional basketball player, but what was different? I said that he was not good enough to play in the US. I said that he went to basketball summer camps in the first one. And the second one, I said that as well, but I said that he didn't score a single point and was the worst player in the camp. I said he went to high school and dominated him in the first one. 
I also said that in the second one, but I said that he wasn't very good. The second one, first one, I said he went to the NBA and dominated everyone. And the second one, I also said that he went to the NBA. But I told you guys about all his injuries and how his failures. And then I also said in the first one that he won five championship rings. And the second one, I also said he's won five championship rings. What was different about the second one, other than the additional information? More detail. So it's because he had he had good things happen to him and bad. In exactly. the first one, that was only good. Exactly. You got to learn about the challenges he had. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, everyone knows about for uh, everyone knows about uh, Jeff Bezos. Who's Jeff Bezos? The guy that made Facebook. Right. The guy that made Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone he's knows. A, he's a every, Everyone knows he was one of the he was the richest person in the world until uh, last year, right? He was one of the richest people in the world. But what people don't know is this is what his office looked like when he started off. This, a complete mess, yeah. right? He couldn't even afford a proper table, so that's just a piece yeah. of random stuff on it, yeah. and he just spray painted the name of the company. So imagine, does this look like a, you know, every normal person? Like if you go to a random office, would this look like a very average person? What? No. No? no. Why not? No. Because it's very messy. messy yeah. But what I mean is that does, it, does, it, does Jeff Bezos in this image, if you look at this image, would you think of him as he's going to be the richest person? There's no world? image. No. Oh. No. 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 You wouldn't, right. Just based on the image, you would yep. just assume he's just an average office worker who's a bit messy, but you've never seen him be the richest person in the world. But that's what I'm trying to get at. In a lot of stories, you need to show problems to become better because problems make the story interesting. It shows how the character has changed over time. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. For example, yeah. Do you, would you guys would you guys like stories where or do you guys <coughs> admire people who were born rich? or who work hard and became rich? Work, work hard, hard and became rich. Hard. Why is that? Hard. Because they actually like tried to become rich. Mm-hmm. These tried. people just got it because they wanted it. Exactly. Do you guys find it fun to, pl- for example, if you guys have younger siblings who are like one or two years old, would you find it fun to play soccer against them? No. no. Why? No. Why? Because it's unfair. Yeah, it's too easy, right? Yeah, they'll have the advantage. Exactly. And that's why, that's why it's so important to have good problems in your story. You need to make your stories challenging. You need to make them inspiring, where the problem is stronger than the character. Do you guys understand? Yeah. 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 So I want to talk about a few things. So the thing is, what stories it really tests out who a ca- the co- core of a character. The protagonist has to find a solution to their immediate problem, but the solution will probably create a whole set of problems that they'll have to solve again. And that's what storytelling is. It's creating problems for characters and giving them the opportunity to use their unique skills and resources to solve these problems. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. So, yep. so for example, Let's just say uh, we have a story about uh, a young girl, right? And sorry, uh, she's in. She's 19 years old. She's driving home from uni one day, and a car breaks down. In the distance, um, there's no one in front of her, and there's no one behind her, and her phone's about to die. Do you guys feel kind of scared? Yeah. yeah. Yes. How can she solve the problem that she's in? She has to use her own skills, right? The skills Wait, how much battery does she have on her phone? Yeah, good, good question. So you have to think about the things that she has around her, such as her phone, how much battery she has left, what can she do, so things like battery that. Battery saving phone. So it's all about looking at what the character has and what they have around them to solve the problem. All right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's continue. Yep. The skills you would get out of the char- protagonist situation. Do you guys know what a protagonist is? No. Yeah, the main character. The main, main character. character. The skills you would need to get out of the protagonist situation are the same skills we all use on a daily basis to solve hundreds of problems. It's the same skills that the protagonist will use in their story to solve the problems they face. Stories resonate with us. They like really touch us. 
because they're all about solving problems because that's what each one of us do every day. For example, in school today, some of you might have forgot your lunchbox. You have a problem and need to solve it. Some of you are playing sport and the ball went into the roof. You had to figure that out. Some of you forgot your tuition homework and now you have to figure out an excuse to tell your parents, right? So life is always about problems that you have to solve. okay? So there's a few yeah. techniques that I want to talk about. So do you guys have your notebooks with you? Do you guys yeah. have your notebooks what? with you? What? Well, have what? Do you have, have, no- have what? With you? A notebook. Yes, notebook. I have a notebook. Cool. Yeah, I have a notebook. Take it out. Take it out. So we're going to take some notes. Let me just draw a line. Okay. Okay. So the first thing is, the first um, part of you creating a problem, rule number one is create a problem that demands your protagonist's attention or create a problem that demands your character's attention. What was it again? Here you go. Can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Create a problem that demands your protagonist's attention. So what does that mean? If you write a story, for example, let's just say back to our story about the main character. Let's say the main character, that girl who is driving home from uni, if she's driving in a very good neighborhood, is it a problem that really demands her? Excuse me, actually, let's just say she's driven home, she's parked her car in the garage and the car breaks down then. Is it really a problem that demands her attention? No. 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 But let's say it's the same character. They're on a road trip and they're they're in the middle of a big road with no people nearby. For the nearest 50 kilometers, there's no one nearby. Is that a problem that demands your attention? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Good. So do you see the difference? You have to create a problem that demands your attention. Okay? Yeah. Rule number two, or... something to think about is create a problem that cannot be solved in a predictable way. So here you go. Create a problem that can't be solved in a predictable way. So back to the road trip situation, we've already got the attention of the protagonist. We've already got the attention of the girl in the middle of the big road. If she has her phone and it has a reception and she can just call a pickup truck to, uh, you know, a tow truck to come save her, is that a predictable solution? No. Yes. Not really. Yes. Yeah. Right, what would you do? Well, how is that not predictable? If you were in this situation, what would you do instead? Uh, it's not. No, the, the person who said it's not a predictable, tell me why you think it wasn't predictable. Do you guys know what predictable means? Yes. Like, yes. Like yeah. easily thought of. Easily thought of. Yeah, exactly. It, it's likely to happen. So like what you think would happen, right? So for example, um, her calling a tow truck or her parents to come pick her up. That's a very predictable solution. Yeah. And this, in, in, that top, in, in that situation where she's in the middle of the road and she could call someone for help, is that a very e- predictable, very easy way to solve it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we can't let, so in this story, we can't let her have phone reception. What does she do now? Um, try to search for any buildings or cars or people nearby. There's nothing. There's 50 kilometers of nothing nearby. Uh, Hannah, come on, stop with the filters. We're here to study. Mm-hmm. Try to walk. What do you think, Fatima? How, how, what, what, what would you do? You're in the middle of nowhere. You don't have your phone. You can't call anyone. And it's starting to get dark. And you know that there are... That there are... Wild animals in the bush. 
There you go. There's wild animals in the bush. What would you do, Hannah? Fatima, sorry. Um, push the car. Push the car. Good. But how long can you push it for? 50 kilometers of no people nearby? Um, like... You can't push a car. Like would you want to push it? I mean, you, no, you can't push a car. You just have to put the car in neutral, take the brake off, and then you push. Oh, it's that easy. But why, why do we push the car? What, what do we do with it? See if it starts, maybe, Fatima? Yeah, maybe. Or yeah. try and fix it yourself. Okay, perfect. So we tried both solutions. Solution one, we start tried pushing it, see if it would start like that. But unfortunately, you're at the bottom of a hill and you couldn't push it up a hill. Two, you check the uh, engine bay, but turns out since you're so young, since you're only 19, you don't know much about how to fix cars. So now you can't fix it that way as okay. well. Okay, I know. Maybe I think I know a way. From? Sorry? I think I know a way. One person at a time. Maybe you can see what's wrong. Might maybe try figuring out what's wrong. Yeah, so uh, let's give the character a name. Well, what should we call her? Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. Lucy checks the engine bay. She can't see anything that's uh, easily wrong with it. All right, I think I can do something. What would you do, Sina? Uh, I, I said it. Oh, sorry. What, what would you do, sir? So I would probably try to sleep in the car for the night and in the morning mm. walk the 50 kilometers because there wouldn't be a point in trying to walk the 50 kilometers in the night mm. since you said animals. Mm. And usually in the morning, it'll be easier to see the animals to like try to like not get close to them. But in the night, you can't see them. Good, good. That's a very interesting solution. I love that. So you sleep in the car, okay? Good, 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 yeah. good uh, solution. Anyone else have any other ideas? Okay. Um, the character has fallen asleep. The next day, they wake up and they decide to go for the walk. During the day, the maximum they can walk is 120 kilometers. They walk 50 kilometers and they realize there's nothing there. It's in the afternoon. Now they have two decisions. They still can walk another 70 kilometers forward, risk maybe finding someone, but on the other hand, they might not find anything and they have no shelter for the night. Or they can walk back the 50 kilometers and sleep in their car. Walk 10 kilometers forward. If you still don't find anything, walk the 60 kilometers back. Okay. The character walks 10 more kilometers forward, finds nothing. And the character now walks all the way back to her car. So far, so good. Anyone have any other solutions? Um, maybe she um, doesn't walk the 50 kilometers and she just goes the way, um, way her car drove, like the way back. Oh, so she goes all the way back home? Yeah. Like she goes the all the way back home, finds nothing as well. What? Sorry, but back to the back to the car? No, not back to the car. Like, where, like, so she keeps the going forward. No, like when she goes back. Like she goes backwards. Backwards where? Back like to her back car. To where she was before when she before she got stuck. Oh, it's in the middle of Australia. There's nothing. What? There's nothing either way. It, like it's if I take you and put in the mid mid in the middle of Australia, can you walk all the way back to Perth? Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, bro. So she she goes back to her car. Now what? What's next? What can she do? Not much. Just gotta sleep again and, and try it again next May, morning to start. May have a different solution. Yep, tell me. So she goes back to her car. She mm. gets in her car to have protection, mm. and then she starts thinking of what she should do tomorrow. Good, Yeshlin. What would you do? I'm not sure. What would you do? What would you do? Imagine you're in a situation. What would you do? Sleep. And then sleep. But food's going to run out in a few days. Fatima, what would you do? Um, Because she's on a road trip, there mm. should be other cars passing by like in a few days. So she sleeps mm. there and waits until she finds a car passing by. Look for food and drink. Oh, exactly. Good I was question. gonna say that. Yeah. 
So she goes into the outback and she finds a few berries, but she's not sure whether she can eat it. One so second. now, one so second. I'm going to stop it there. But so far, you guys, you guys learned that you know we have to create a problem that can be solved in a predictable way. So far, is this story very interesting? Yes. Yeah, she's in a very yes. desperate situation. We don't know what she's a going question. to do. Yeah, I am. Just, uh, it's it's me, Sparsh talking. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, I'll come back to you, Sparsh. What's your question, Ian? I can't hear you. So my question is, um, what type of food does she have, and what type of animals are out there? Good question. Good question. So the food she has is she has some beef jerky. Um, she has um, a 24 pack of beer and she has um, a lot of like eggs and bread because she's going and, and- to have a big party with her friends in the camp. And she has a lot of lollies like chocolates. Wait, wait, um, then what are of- the animals? And the animals, there's a lot of kangaroos. And there's stories about a dingo. If you see the dingo, couldn't you throw like beef jerky? Since aren't dingoes like, don't they like meat? Yeah, wouldn't they it- might like it. They might eat it. But then do you really want the dingo to stay around? Do you think the dingo will be happy with just a small pack of beef jerky versus a whole, you know, five day worth of meal that's inside that body? True. True. Yeah. So there you go. Last thing we want to do is we want to create a problem that forces your protagonist to grow. So what that means is at the beginning of a story, you have to have a character. They will have flaws. They're not perfect, right? So Superman, the reason he's annoying is because he's perfect. He's a very good person. But in this character, our friend, uh, this girl, Lucy, she's not perfect. She's very rich. She... Uh, her, she, her dad bought her a very expensive car and she fought against her dad to go on this road trip and she's on this road trip with her car, okay? She doesn't, she looks after everything so her cool room and everything's super, super neat and tidy because she likes taking care of things and she doesn't lose anything that she has. She doesn't like throwing things away or like, you know, destroying things or getting things dirty. So, so she's we not have used to-, to the wild. Yeah, she's like those like, you know, rich, spoiled kids. So now we have to kind of figure out this, this problem that she's stuck in here. Is this slowly going to force her to change in some way? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. She hasn't been able to put on makeup. She hasn't had a shower in a few days because she's been sleeping in a car. She doesn't have any expensive food. All she has is a bunch of snacks. She doesn't have access to her TV shows and all the internet and things like that. So she can't post anything. Her phone's <laughs> dead. Her phone's dead. Well, well done. Oh. So and um, every every time when she was you know before she went on a road trip, anything she wanted, she always got. So is this problem that's is it is it right now forcing her to grow or change or become better? Yeah. 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 Got, got it. Can I ask oh, you yeah. a few questions? Yeah. Um, I have two questions. First yeah. of all, is she a, like one of those spoiled rich girls? Yes, she's a spoiled rich girl. Okay. And second of all, is the, um, um, are the foods out of date? Uh, no. So beef jerky wouldn't go bad no. for a year. Uh, alcohol, beer doesn't go bad for a long time. Um, the other foods, what, did I, what else did I mention? You lollies? said lollies? L- lollies will last a long time as well. Eggs. Eggs. Yeah, you said eggs. Eggs will go bad in about a week's time. But in a country like Australia, you can eat eggs uh, raw. You don't have to cook it. But you can cook it. Okay. There's number two. Okay. That means she should eat the eggs first. Okay. I don't know. Um, I think she should count how much eggs she has. Mm-hmm. And then take... Wait, half, I have another question. And take, yeah. ha- and take half for like... Throwing at animals to defend herself and have to eat. Do you think animals would stop at eggs being thrown at them? No. Yes. No. So, so here, here, here's the solution. So now we know that she has eggs. She needs to use them really fast. And she also has bread, right? She knows that the other stuff can last a long time. Now, one other cool property about alcohol is alcohol is actually a disinfectant. Do you know what that is? No. Uh, that means like it, it can destroy bacteria pretty much. Good. It can destroy bacteria. 
where is the story located in the middle of Australia? So now well, she, has to get, she has to get, she has to get out of her comfort zone. The first thing she would do is she would go to, you know, her car bonnet, like the hood. Yeah. Does that get really hot in Australian summer? Yeah. 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 Yes. She takes, a, the takes a beer. She takes a beer, disinfects the place. And then she waits for it to warm up and get really hot. She fries the eggs, cooks it as much as she can. And then she eats the eggs. Is it disgusting? Yes. Probably. Is it going to taste good? Yeah. No. 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 So oh, she eats okay. that. She eats that bread. Kind of survives. Then she also has to keep in mind that she doesn't have that much water left. She has a few bottles of water and she has a lot of alcohol. Now, alcohol is not a good replacement. What about for... the um, beef jerky? No, wait, I'll get there. It's not a good replacement for water. So she eats the eggs. She eats the bread. And she knows that she can survive for a week or two on that. Maybe a week more, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of that, she's starting to be quite dehydrated, and she's starting to realize that um, her, you know, uh, all she's left with is now very little water and some more beef jerky and lollies. She eats those as well, and lasts one more week. Now all her foods run out. The last thing she can do, the very last thing she can do, is push her car slightly down to the middle of the road, go in, like grab a sh- something sharp from the bush, break the petrol tank so the petrol starts leaking, then slowly walk slightly back and then set something on fire and throw it at the thing and set the whole car on fire. What will that create? Like a light so people can find her. Yeah, yeah. a lot of smoke and a lot of fire. That's the last resort. And if that doesn't work, she's tried everything. But hopefully, if you, but hopefully if you're writing a happy ending, a plane that's flying over or a truck on a next door uh, drive sees the smoke, calls Wait. in the firefighters and they rescue her. Wait, didn't you say that she was going on like a road trip with her friends? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe I said it accidentally, but she's alone. Oh. So, in that story we just made up, did it have a problem that demanded the protagonist's attention? Yeah. Yep. Was it a problem that could be solved in a predictable way? No. no. Did, it, did it force a protagonist to grow or change as a person? Yes. 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 Does anyone have any questions? No. Yes. No questions? Yeah, uh-huh. Hannah, go. Um, was, um, we're in the middle of Australia. Aren't there like loads of um, like places near like gas stations or something? There could be. But for example, let's say she's here. Let's see one sec. Sorry, my phone, my laptop's just, my laptop's acting a bit weird. Let's say our character is here. Do you freeze your screen because I can't see? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I our see. Our character, it. our character is on this road here. Yeah, I was actually imagining it kind of like. Yeah, that. same. I was imagining it like this. There you go. She walks. She walks. She walks. Nothing for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. That's not Yep, see, this, this is what the Australian outback is like. All right, do you guys understand? Yep. Any yeah. other questions? No? Okay, yeah. so those are the three things you need to uh, keep in back of your mind. So stories reflect, essentially, the problem-solving techniques of life. Life is about problem solving and stories work because they reflect this key element for our experience. It's often through experiencing our character's journey of solving a problem in a film and novel that we find strength and insight in our own problems. As you're working on your next story, ask yourself, what problems should your protagonist be solving? And think of some creative ways your protagonist can approach them. So, When you're writing your next story, ask yourself, you know, is this story going to capture their attention? 
Is this story going to um, be solved in a predictable manner? Is this story going to, um, let's see, what else? And that last one, is this story going to make the character grow? If it's not any of those things, then it won't be a very interesting story. Do you guys understand? Yeah. So I'll end off by this thing here. This is a very interesting. Wait, one second. Are we going to have homework? Yes, of course we'll have homework. Well, that's at the end of the lesson. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. So I want to tell you guys a very famous movie that was released in, um, let's see how old it was. Uh, let's see, let's see. So this movie was released in 1976 called Rocky. And this is a, one of the most like famous movies of all time because there's so many movies made after it, right? So as you can see, it had a budget. It had a budget of less than $1 million, but the movie went to make $225 million. And the story is basically about this young boy called Rocky and he's homeless. He has nothing uh, for himself. And he's not a very strong fighter, but he wants to, you know, the, his only way out is to, he wants to become a world champion. So he trains extremely hard and he finally, uh, he has to fight, uh, he has to fight his opponent who is way stronger than him, right? So I'll show you this uh, scene from Rocky. There you go. So this is training scene. Looking at this training scene, does he have very fancy equipment? No. Does he look like a very rich, you know, sports person? No. 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 I can barely even see it. It's really blurry. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old movie. I can see it clearly now. Whoa. He's sweating a lot. He's letting Working himself hard. be punched. Is he punching meat? Yeah. He's really happy now. Okay, does watching that make you want to cheer for him and hope that he wins the fight? Oh. Yeah. 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 And I want to show you one last scene as well. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is the same movie franchise. The character has grown up. He's a very famous boxer. And now his son is complaining that because he's so famous, his son isn't able to be, success, isn't able to be successful. Is this like the second movie? I can't hear. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Wait, is yeah. it? Yeah, wait, wait. I'll... I'll, I'll... Get, get it connected. Okay. Oh, what, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself. And this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor not to go through with this, okay? This is only going to end up bad for you, and it's going to end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. That's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. 
Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke and that I'm gonna be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you? You ain't gonna believe this. But you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up and say to your mother, this kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching you every day. It was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. Okay. No. So... What I wanted to get out of that movie scene and the, pre the this movie scene most importantly is <coughs> do you see how this character is telling him, his son, that you know he's a professional boxer, but who does he say hits harder than any professional boxer in the world? What? Oh. What's I know. more challenging than any boxing match? Um, the world. The world. Yeah. What, what did he say? The world hits harder than any professional boxer because yeah, so, people like throw you down no, ma no matter how tough you are. Yeah. You mean a nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. So he's saying that life is always going to be hard, right? No matter how, who's who you are, how strong you are, it'll be way stronger. So when you're writing your stories and when you're creating your problems, think about real life problems as well. So it's good to have interesting problems like, you know, being, um, you know, you have to fight a wizard like Voldemort or you have to fight a superhero. But more interesting, sto like the stories that are more interesting are often with problems that are more relatable, right? Such as having to write a big test and you haven't really studied for it or you're not as smart. Having to face a bully, things like that, or having to pay for bills when you recently got fired from a job. Being stuck and not knowing what to do. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, Arnav, question. Um, I forgot. Okay. If that's the case, does anyone have any more questions about writing today? No. No? Any questions? No. All right. In that case, I'll give you guys your five minute break. Come back at 517. 517. Go get some water, go to the toilet, and come back in five minutes.
I'm back. पीछे ब्लर होता है पापा बताएंगे कैसे होता है पीछे का बैकग्राउंड ब्लर हेलो ऑल राइट लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड Hello. Hey everybody. Okay. Okay. So, uh if you guys are all ready, uh could you quickly mark your homework for this week? This is the answers. I'll give you guys 5 minutes to mark your homework and we'll get started. Once you guys finish the, uh, once you guys finish what you've marked, could you send in the chat which questions you'd like to go through? When you guys are done marking, send your uh, questions you want to do in the chat, okay? Can you repeat? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Wait, what do we do when we're done? So when you're done, send whichever questions you want to go through in the chat. Okay. I sent mine. Thank you. I put mine in. Thanks guys. Okay, are you guys ready? Yep. Not yet. Yep. Yep. 
Awesome. All right. So let's go through uh, some of the questions. Um, question number four. So let's see. Question number four. This is an interesting question. Um, it takes, actually, let me go to the list. Question one's pretty straightforward, right? Do you guys know how to do find average of something? Yes. Yeah. 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 Add, all the, add all the numbers, divide by how many numbers there are. Question number two, I think someone asked for it. We'll go through the list of the questions. But what did you say? Divide it by what? Yep. Yeah. So if you want to find the average of something, you add up all the numbers and then you divide by how many numbers there are. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's. We learned that in school in my math class a yeah. few days ago. So you add them all, all right. up and you divide by nine. Perfect. Next question, what you do, question two, what then yeah, is uh, someone else first? So let's quickly go through that. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, I did the wrong um, week's homework. I did week four. Oh, that's a bit silly. Yeah. Okay. Question three, Dia's car broke down, so she called the repairman <laughs> to fix it. Sorry. She, she, she was charged $25 for every hour and the repairman worked and it took 10.5 hours, including a 2.5 hour break. How much did Dia pay? So for this question, let me add a question. So it was uh, $25 per hour. The person worked 10.5 hours. Um, we won't include the uh, 2.5 break. So 10.5 and what do you get? I I forgot to unmute. Um, it you'd get oh, including a ten point five hour break. So we need to subtract the two point five hours. I'm silly. So ten point five minus two point five. What do you get? Um, eight. Eight. So what's twenty five times eight? Two hundred. Perfect. Two hundred. So that's uh, how you would do that question. That was a silly uh, trip up of me, but that was a good question because you had to pay attention to the question. You had to make sure you read it carefully. All right, next question. Question number three. Did anyone want to go through question number three? It was pretty straightforward. Anyone want to go through question three? No. I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. Uh, sorry, did you say you want to go through it or not go through it? I'm not sure. I, um, yeah, I got a little stuck with that one. Okay, so let's quickly do that. Trisha is making three shelves for her father. She has a piece of lumber that's 11 meters long. She wants the top shelf to be a half meter shorter than the middle shelf and the bottom shelf to be a half meter shorter than, than twice the length of the middle shelf. How much how long would the middle shelf be if she used the entire 11 meters piece of wood? So if you were to write this down, kind of looks like me. If you, if you, sorry, who looks like you? Uh, this dude kind of looks like me. Oh, cool. So if you, if you write it out, it, so basically the top shelf plus the middle shelf plus the bottom That's shelf, me. what should that equal to? That dude. What should that equal to? 11? Yes, 11, right, because that's how much meters we have. Um, guys, can you please make sure you're muted because we can hear the conversation. Thank you. Now, we know the top shelf is just the top shelf. It doesn't say anything about it. Oh, sorry, actually, it says the top shelf. What does it say? It has to be half a meter shorter than the middle shelf, correct? Hello? Sorry, I, was, I forgot I was on mute. That's okay. Right. Yeah. So top shelf is the same as the middle shelf minus 0 0.5 meters. Do you understand? Yep. We then know that the bottom shelf has to be how much? It has to be half a meter shorter than twice the length of the mi middle shelf. So two times the middle shelf minus 0 0.5. Do you guys understand? Yes. No. Yep. No, who doesn't understand? Me. Who's me? Me. 
as well. Okay. So if you read the question, right, it says the top shelf, the top shelf has to be half a meter shorter than the middle shelf. So we basically know that the top shelf is the exact same as the middle shelf, but then you subtract half a meter. What's half in decimal? Six. No. Half as decimal is 0 0.5, right? Uh. Right, what's, what's one half as a percentage, 50%? which is 0 yeah. 0.5. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. The top yeah. shelf is the same as the middle shelf, but you subtract 0 0.5 meters. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. That's why we have that equation. The second equation, we know that the bottom shelf has to be twice as big as the middle shelf. So two times M, twice as big. And it has to be minus 0 0.5. Do you understand? Yep. So what we can do is you see this equation here. We can yep. replace, oops, we can replace some of those letters with the values we have. So we know that T, I can get rid of T and replace it with, with what T is equal to. What's T equal to? 0 0.5. And minus 0 0.5. So I'm going to replace it there. Does it tell us what M is? No, M is just M. But we can replace the bottom shelf. What does the bottom shelf is equal to? Two times m minus two zero point five. Okay, good. Two times middles. Now we're going to simplify all of this. Okay, so I'm going to take. I'm going to. What I'm going to do is. Okay. So we're going to simplify all of this. Ready? So move this up here. So, what is m plus m? plus 2m. 4m. Good girl, 4m. And what is my negative 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5? Um, zero. No. You no. owe me 50 cents, and then you borrow another 50 cents from me. How much money do you owe me? One dollar. Oh, one dollar. Do you understand? And that, is, and that is equal to just 11 dollars. Three. Yeah. Three. Oh, oops. Three. Wait, three? Yeah. How is it three? It's four minus one is three. Is it four minus one is it, or is it four M minus one? Oh, four M minus one. Yeah, so it's not three. So that's equal to 11. So we have a lot of new students here today. So I'm going to quickly recap for the new students, but we've learned as a group in our previous lessons just the basics of algebra. So I'll get started on that. But in the meantime, could I get a few of you guys to make sure you're on mute while you know continue to listen? Because I can hear background noises. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. All right. So for those of you who missed the uh, lesson on algebra, I'll quickly go through that. So there's two rules to algebra. Rule number one is move, move letters to one side, numbers to the other side. Do you guys understand? Yes. And I'll show you how it works out. And rule number two is, um, rule number two is when you move something to the other side, it becomes the opposite, okay? Two basic rules of algebra. If you have a notebooks, I would write this, to, this down. With the title, with the title, um, two rules of algebra. So these are not proper mathematical rules, but they just basically help you to do algebra questions. Got it? So the first rule is move letters to one side, numbers to the other side. We have four M here. We have negative one here. We have 11 here. Which one do we want to move first? We want to move this negative one to the other side because we want to have the numbers on one side, correct? Yes, no, maybe. I'm a little confused. Yeah. So we move to the other side and that becomes 4m equals 11. But what does a negative one? Remember, when you move something to the other side, it becomes the opposite. So what does a negative one become? If it's a negative one and it becomes the opposite, what does it become? 
Plus one. one. Yeah, plus one. Sorry, something's gone into my eye. Plus one. So now we have 4m is equal to 11 plus one. What's 11 plus one? 11 plus one is 12. 12. 12. Now, four multiplied by something gives me 12. So what's four multiplied three. by? Three. Three. So m is equal to three. Do you understand? Yeah. S. Got it? Yeah. And I'll show you the other method as well. So uh, for example, if you still follow this rule, we, you, we have to move this four here. Right? Four is a number, correct? Yes, four we is a number. To, we have to move to the other side. So what's four doing to M here? Um, okay. um, four is timesing. Timesing, it's multiplying. So when you move to the other side, it becomes? Three. No. Dividing? Good, dividing. So that becomes four is equal to 12 divided by four, which is M is equal to three. 12 divided by four is? Three. Three. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take notes. Please take notes on this. It's very, very useful. Take notes. Okay, so we have to write this down. I have a question. Yes, you have to take it down. Yeah, what's your question? Um, so if it's four times 12, four times M equals 12, mm -hmm. then when you divide it, would it still equal 12? No, because 12 divided by a number can't be the same as 12, can it? Except for one number, which is one. So 12 divided by four turns into? Bray. Yeah. Bray. Okay. Next question. Next question, question number four is pretty straightforward. Uh, the way to kind of solve it is you have four people, people takes 25, oops, 25, minutes we need to make it eight how long does it take two people if it takes 25 minutes for four people 12.5 12 oh, oh sorry it, it become it becomes longer remember it becomes oh, yeah, 50, 50, 50. Yeah. 50 minutes right um actually i should work the other way around so yeah so we know that it becomes twice as long how long would it take eight people 12.5 12. Yeah, twelve point five. How long would it take sixteen people? Um, uh, six point six point two five. Six point two five. Six seven five. Yeah. So we know that the way to do it is from four to eight. When you multiply by two, what do you do to the other side? Divide. Double it. Divide by two. Correct. Oh. Because yeah. it becomes faster. faster. Divide by two. So now what we wanted to do, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go from four people to 10 people. So what multiplied by four gives you 10? Um, 2.5, but yeah. 2.5, good. So four multiplied by 2.5 gives me 10. So you do the same thing on the other side. You divide by 2.5. What's 25 divided by 2.5? 25 divided by 2.5. Ten. 10 minutes. Good. Do you guys understand? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Take that notes down and I'll move on to the next question. Wait, what do we note down? The working out, the working out.
Okay. Question five. Question five, I would say it's a bit too hard for you. Now you can do this, but the main problem is you don't know how to do two equations. So the first equation you need to learn is the um, area of a circle equation. The next equation you need to do is the circumference of a cir circle equation of a circle. So since you don't know about this, um, this question was from uh, two years ago. It's a bit too hard for you. So we should have taken it out. I think it might have like slipped through the question papers. Is it as hard as that gate no. question? So, no, no, no. So for example, if I go to the previous question, question four, was it somewhat challenging? Actually, no, better example is question three. Was that somewhat challenging? No. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it does. So it was somewhat challenging, but it didn't really require a lot of additional math knowledge. I'll tell yeah. you why. I'll tell you why. You could use algebra to solve it, which was a faster way. But algebra, for example, most of algebra, if you just simplify it down, it should be somewhat easy to solve because it's like common sense. But even if you didn't trick the algebra route, I'll show you how to do it without algebra. And that is by replacing the answer. The question's asking for the middle shelf. So what you would normally do is again, even if you didn't know algebra, you write it down as this. Top shelf is equal to middle shelf minus 0 0.5. And then we know that the bottom shelf is equal to twice the middle shelf minus 0 0.5. And then you start putting the answers. So if you say, well, if the middle shelf is two meters, how big is the top shelf? The top shelf would be 1.5, correct? Yeah. And the middle yeah. shelf would be, okay. sorry, bottom shelf would be? Bottom uh, shelf. 3.5. 3.5. 2.5. No, so it would be 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 0 0.5 is 3.5, correct? Yeah. And then the middle shelf is equal to 2. So if you add all these numbers, does that give you 11? No, uh, that no. gives you uh, So you try, you, oh, you, no. try the, you, try the, you try the next one. So if the top shelf is three, sorry, middle shelf is three, the top shelf would be three minus 0 0.5, that should give you? 2.5. The bottom shelf would be? 5.5. 5.5. And the middle shelf will be? Three. 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 Will that give you 11? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So do you see how you can still solve it? It yes. wasn't a challenging question. The question itself didn't require complicated math, but you could still solve it. Question five does require a slightly advanced level of maths. Not advanced, advanced, but advanced for you guys. And it was those two concepts. So I'll skip over question five. What I'll try to do is I'll make a video for you guys. Let me take note of that. One second. I'll take a video or take some notes for you guys and then I'll send it. Oh, no, I got the question five correct. Yeah, that's good. Video slash notes on circumference of a circle. Okay, I'll get that on top of it for you guys. Next question, question six. Does anyone want to do question six? No. Hi. Good, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like uh, simple fractions and percentages. You work backwards. I got it right. Question seven is pretty easy. Question eight, uh, let's see, you left it through for three hours. She's not for long, two hours. Question, it was pretty easy. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Anyone want to do question eight? No? Okay. Uh, for the interest of time, I'll skip through a few questions. If we have time, we'll come back to that. Another uh, thing is we'll be sending out the answer keys, which have all the step-by-step -step guide, so you can follow that as well. Okay. Uh, ooh, question eight seems interesting. She's written pretty complicated way, but I'll take a look at that as well. Let me take notes of that one second. Question eight. Look at Q8 for events. Okay. Uh, next question. Aryan owns a car shop and advertise that all cars are 20% off next week. Is question eight okay, 10 okay? Do you want me to go through it? No. Okay, I think I will go through it. 
There's a lot of silence. So Aaron owns a car shop and advertises that all cars are 20% off next week. Since he's an honest, since he isn't very honest, he raises the price this week so that when they are 20% off, they'll be at the original price. How much should he raise it this week so that he can reduce the new price by 20% next week and still sell the cars at the original price? Okay. So the way it works is like this. It might seem pretty straightforward where you go from, so for example, you do, for example, uh, yeah, text, okay. It might seem easy where you say, oh, okay. So he's going to, so week one, week one, he's going to increase by a certain percentage. And then next week, when he decreases it, decreases, by 20%, it should be the same price as the original price. Do you understand? I'll give you an example. Okay. Let's say I'm selling you guys, um, I'm selling uh, you guys a lolly. Okay. And I say, yeah. all right, everybody, if you buy a lolly today, it's uh, you get $2 off. Okay. Now, imagine if I raise the price of the lorry by $2 last week so that I can sell it for $2 off, would I still get the same price? Yes. Yeah. So if you wanted, so for example, let's just replace it by percentage by dollar. If you want to decrease it by $20 next week, how much should he increase it this week so that it'll be the same price? 20. Yeah. So if he's decreasing by $20 next week, he needs to increase by $20 this week to be the same price, correct? Yes. But the thing yeah. is, percentages don't work that way. If you assume that if he decreases by 20% next week, he only needs to increase by 20% this week, would, would he still get the same price? No. And I'll tell you why. He'll get zero. Let's say, let's say I have a $2 coin. Okay, a $100 coin. A hundred, sorry, I have a $100, something mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, for $100. If I increase it by 50% this week, how much would the new price be? Uh, 150. 150. But then if I decrease it by 50% next week, how much would the new price be? 50? Nope. Oh, 75? Yes, yeah, 75. So percentage, it doesn't come back to the original $100, does it? Does it come uh, back to the original uh, $100? Oh, no. No. So what you need to do is you need to work backwards. So... Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So we know that right now the product is selling at a premium and then whatever that is. So we know that X, a random number, if you divide it by 20, if you reduce by 20%, X decrease 20%. That should give you the full price. Do you guys understand? Yes. Now, yes. how do you decrease by a percentage? Does anyone know? How do you find how do you find 50% off something? You multiply by 50%, correct? Yes. Let's say I tell yeah. you that something's on sale for 25% off. How do you find out? You do 10% of the thing and 10% of the thing and add it up and subtract it by the original price. That's a long way, right? That's a long way. I'll show you the short way. The short way is if I tell you to decrease it by 20%, you just take 100% and you'd reduce it by 20% and you get? The answer. 80%. You get 80% and you multiply that. You multiply it by that. So I'll show you how it works. So let's just say I'm selling a car for $100. Let's say I'm selling a car for $100. $100? $100,000. I'm selling a Ferrari and I reduce it by 20%. The way I would do it is I'll take 100% and I reduce 100% because how, how much is what's 100% of the car price? 100,000. Yeah. So I'm reducing by 20%. So uh, what I'm doing is if I reduce by 20%, I'm taking 100% and I'm subtracting by 20%, correct? Yeah. And what do you get? 80%. So we're trying to find, essentially, when you reduce by 20%, you're trying to find 80% of $100,000. Do you guys understand? Yes. Yeah. 
And all you have to do then to find a percentage of anything, you just do 0 0.8 multiplied by 100%. So you just convert the percentage into a fraction and you multiply it by that value. Do you guys understand? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'll go backwards. So delete. Do you guys want to take this down, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now in this question, we have something is reduced by 20%. So something multiplied by 0 0.8 gives me how much? 100% or 100. So again, it's an algebra question. Letters on one side, numbers has to go to the other side. So right now it's multiplying by 0 0.8. When you move to the other side, it becomes? 80. Divided by 80, 0 oh. 0.8. So divided by 0 0.8. And what's 100 divided by 0 0.8? 80. Uh, two. Nope, not 80. What's 100 I... divided by 0 0.8? 100 divided by 0 0.8 is equal to? 125. 125. Wait, so what? Person, well, let me take your calculator out and check. Okay. I'll tell you why that works. Imagine you have. Uh, two pies and each person can eat half a pie how many people can you feed two Wait, divided by 0 0.5 and you get you have two pies each person can eat half a pie how many people can you feed four four yeah. see two divided by 0 0.5 becomes four so 100 divided by 0 0.8 becomes 125 do you understand yeah. No. You don't understand that? I do. Okay. So basically, it's increased by 25%. The answer is? 125. No. It's 25. X is the increased price. The actual price is 25. All right. I do. Um, quickly take some notes and I'll move on to the next question. Question 13 is an interesting question. Isabel drives her car from point A at a rate of 60 kilometers per hour. So Isabel is driving this way. Steven's also driving at the same direction at the same time at 1.5 times speed of Isabel. After three hours, how far apart are they? So first of all, you'd find out what speed Steve is driving at. What speed, what speed is Steve driving at? What's one and a half times 60? Uh, 90 kilometers. 90. So what's the speed difference between them two? 30 kilometers per hour. 30, 30. So, basically, Steve, so, for, so basically every hour, Steve will have driven 30 kilometers more than Isabel. So after three hours, how far will Steve be? You'll be 180, no, 100, wait, 200, wait, no. Wait. 90 kilometers of power. 90. Good. Good. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yes. Yep. One from back. Okay. And from what? When? Okay. Next question. This is a pretty straightforward question, but I'm not sure if you guys have done volume before. But volume, essentially to find the volume of most shapes, like the, especially the important ones you need to learn, it's pretty straightforward. 
you just do height times width times length. It says that this box holds 30 Rubik's cubes. What is special about a cube? All sides are equal. All sides are equal. So the volume of small, so the volume of the small cube is cube eight, is eight equal, ten centimeters. Three times three is equal to what? Twenty-seven. 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 And then there's thirty Rubik's cubes. So thirty times twenty-seven is equal to eight hundred and ten. Eight, yeah, eight hundred and ten. There you go. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Take that down. We'll go to the next question. Um, what I did was 30 times 3, and then mm -hmm. 90 times 3, and then 270 times 3. Why? Why is that? I got 810. Yes, but then where does that logic make sense? Why, why would you multiply by those three numbers? Because of... um. Like no. Volume, length, and depth. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so don't worry about that. Um, I think you just got a bit lucky there, but make sure you understand how to do the volume and you know follow those steps. Uh, question seven is pretty straightforward, but the way to kind of solve it or break it down is every odd week, she gets $13. Every even week, she gets $100. So how much does she get every two weeks? $113. Yeah. And then how many weeks are, are there in a year? 52. 26. Half of 52. 26. Yep. There you go. So that's what we do. 2,938. And what do you get? 113 times 26? 2,938. Perfect. All right. Wait, is it 27 weeks? Sorry, 26 weeks. That... So there's, 50, there's 52 weeks in a year, but then yeah. we calculated the pay for two weeks. So half of oh. 52 is 26. Okay, so, excuse me. Okay. A giant box has dimensions of 1.5 meters, 0 0.75 meters, and 0 0.6 meters. If it stores stores smaller boxes with a dimension of five times four times three, how when it is full, how much does the box? Okay, so let's break it down. First, let's find the volume of the big shape. Um, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so the volume of the large shape, the large cube is 1.5 meters. Now, can we, can, can we, the problem with this question is, do you see that there's two different units going around? Yes. Yes, one is meters and one centimeters. So let's convert it to centimeters. So one, what's 1.5 meters and centimeters? 150. Yep, 775 times 60. What's this equal to, guys? Two hundred eighty-five. Sorry. Two hundred eighty-five. Nope. There's no way. One fifty times ninety-five is two eighty-five. So it's multiplication. Multiplication. Oh. The answer is six hundred and seventy-five. Do you understand? Yes. Thousand. No. Yeah. Okay. Now we know that the volume of a small cube, small, what's that? What does that equal to? It is five times four times three. What's that equal to? 60. 
50. Good. So how many of those how many of those small cubes will fit in the big one? So six seven six seven five thousand divided by sixty. And what do you get? Um Eleven thousand two hundred and fifty. Good, 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 good. Eleven thousand two hundred fifty cubes. Okay. Now we know that the large. We know that the small cube, small cube is um, five hundred grams. So you do eleven thousand two hundred and fifty times five hundred grams. What's five hundred grams in kilograms? Um, zero point five. Yeah, and then what's this equal to? Fifty-six. No. It's times. Yeah, what's eleven thousand two hundred fifty times two point uh, ah. times zero point five? Oh. Zero point five. What? What that? Come on, guys. What? Uh, oh. I don't know. Yeah. I it think I know. It should be 5,000. It should be 5,200. I literally just wrote that down. Yeah, it should be 5,625 kilograms. Yep. We know that the large cube, we know that the large box, including all the small cubes, is equal to 6,000. 600, so, I mean 6,000. So if you take away all the small cubes, how much should it weigh? Uh, 375. 375. 375. Okay, awesome. All right, take those notes down. Now, remember, for next week, your homework is general ability, reading, and writing. I'll quickly, What's a writing show, topic? I'll quickly show you the writing topic. But Where while, do I get my uh, homework? While I do that, one second, one second. Guys, one second, please. Thank you. Come on. Manners, please. Okay. So I'll quickly show you a writing topic first, and then I'll answer any other questions you have after that. Okay. So this is the writing topic. One second. Let me open it up. Make sure you take your take down the notes on the screen first. All right, so this is the writing topic for this week. Take a screenshot if you'd like. I'll also send you guys uh, this thing on the WhatsApp group chat. What is? What does that mean? That's for you to figure out. I can't tell you anything. It, I can't tell you in the gate exam, right? All right. Um, what's the questions people had? Um. Okay. So when the um. What if, um, like the link for like the homework thingy, the math? Sorry? Like, can you send the link thingy for the maths? Didn't or the, like, you haven't saved the booklet? Yeah. Wait, what link thingy for what? I mean, the answer key? No, not the answers. Then? Like, for the um, question. Are you not the mind? I got it. Are you sure? Yeah, okay. I got it. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, um yeah. I wasn't here last week. I don't yeah. have for last week. You don't have what, sorry? The answer key for last week. The answer key or what the is question? that noise? The answer key for last week question. Okay, okay. I'll send both of that now. One second, just stay on the call. I'll send it in the chat. Uh, 
Oh, Some okay. people left already. That's okay. I have a question real quick. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so where do we get our homework? Yep, so I've sent it in the chat now. So check the chat. Uh, you guys already know what next week's homework is. Next week's homework is the week four material. It's so, not in my chat. Sorry? It's not in my chat. It's not in the chat. Like for my is it this? Yep. Mine is oh, yeah, it is on now. Okay. So it's week four. So you have to do uh, reading comprehension, general ability, and writing. And when do we have to post our homework? So next week, uh, before the lesson, you should email it to me. Okay. Not everything, just just your writing. That's what I need. Just your writing, you need to email it to me. All right. Okay. The answers aren't there. The answers haven't sent it yet, but you, 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 you will get it via the WhatsApp group chat. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll see you guys next week then.